Hello, my name is Joe. Um, this is Flick. Hello. Uh, we're from Lead Tax Base. Um, sorry I've got paper notes, but we designed this as a group of eight of us over the last 24 hours, so I'm still not sure exactly what's in it yet. Um, Flick's one of our directors, I'm one of the members. We're here to talk about Hackerbase. Okay. So, um, a really quick history of Hackerbase is we can't really do that before we cover what is hacking. Hacking almost certainly is not what you're first thinking because it's not what the media tends to portray. Um, so we're not criminal masterminds, we're not out there kind of breaking into people's bank accounts or anything overtly crazy. Um, we're, we're very much what some people would term as white hat hackers, so we're, we're into it for the sake of, basically for, for the sake of wanting to know what's inside of the box. And there's, there's a hell of a lot to be said for that because I'm, the world is full of black boxes and no one really goes out of the way to explain that to you. So. Um, yeah, so hacking is in being creative and playing with technology, um, as in trying to find out how things work, as in trying to make things work for yourself. So we keep finding things like printers make really good robot parts, but that's probably not what HP had in mind when they sold it to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, yeah, um, but, but it's, it's possible and it's, it's quite good to do. Um, um, I think um, basically, Hackspace is a place to come and do that. It's a place to learn, it's a place to share ideas. You've got something you want to make, you turn to your Hackspace, you speak to someone else and go, well, I'm thinking of doing this, and they go, oh, have you thought of doing this? And you go, wow, that's great, I don't know how to do it yet. Oh, ask him, he knows how to do it. <laughs> and he'll say, oh yeah, you do it like this, fantastic. And you get something from there. And as kind of a group, you progress further. I think one of the nice definitions I got was, um, Hackspace is a community-based hub of science, technology, art, and philosophy. So, we cover a whole range of things. It's whatever you want to bring into it. So, uh, we safely uh, go on. So, ha Hackspace culture. Um, yeah. So, most, most importantly, <laughs> um, so <laughs> if I actually, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop back to to Hackspaces around the world. So, there's there's another oh, no, later. That's later. Another slide there. Oh, okay. So, um, <laughs> Hackspace culture. Um, com common ideas. Um, Pretty much every hack space has rule zero, which is really, really important. We don't like people being on fire. It makes a mess of the place, and it's a pain to tidy up. Um, most hack spaces enjoy open source because it kind of fits in with the ethos of being able to find out how things work and being able to improve on them and um, work from there. Um, what else have we got up there? Hack spaces like robots. Robots are good. Yeah. Um, also, really like lasers. Lasers. Mm -hmm. Almost yeah. every hack well, likes lasers. It's like lasers, fantastic. A um, lot of hack spaces have bits of music technology, um, but it, it's, so I, I, I apologise for the language, but essentially hack space can probably be defined as two things. One, don't be on fire, and two, don't be a dick. And every, everything else is brilliant because it's all about learning and just, yeah, playing with things and having fun. I think um, uh, personally one of the fascinating things is kind of the widespreadness of the things you'll find in hacking. I mean, we're actually missing a couple of persons on here for whatever reason, uh, but the amount of things you'll find in a hack space not any particular one, but spread throughout the world. There's people doing uh, chemistry experiments, there's people lock picking, people are knitting. Um, it's a big, big op open bio movement with um, sort of open PCR, so uh, there's that. Um, people tend to be making robots. Hackspaces down in London are actually building commercial office of products, so they've been doing some of the accessories for the Pine, they've actually got them to market. Um, I'm trying to think what else um, brings up to the right. uh, General hardware things, like if you want to build something, we've got workshops to do it in. Um, spare computers, using hi fi, learning how to use a computer. Um, if you don't. Programming. Yeah. Yeah, learning how to break it, it's all quite good. Yeah. Um, also, lots of socialising, lots of talking to other people. Lots yeah. of caffeine, lots of cake. cake. Yeah. We'll show you how to talk to you later. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, hack space is everywhere. Um, there's, there's at least those three in the UK. Um, prominent ones, uh, obviously, London's that, that's absolutely massive. Nottingham's done really, really well. Edinburgh, until about six or eight months ago, was literally a room the size of this stage, and they had about 30 members, and they were producing some fantastic things. Um, so, they don't people don't let it sort of slow you down when. Um, you don't have the most fantastic resources because Nottingham's got a really cool hack space. It kind of makes me a little bit chilly. Um, so where else? Um, around the world, there's hack spaces all over the place. So there's, there's over a thousand of them. Um, they tend to turn up in some of the most strange places. So there's, there's quite a big hacking community in Afghanistan at the moment. Um, and they're, they're working really well with their local community to try and, well, to, yeah, basically bring, bring culture and education and fun back to the place. Um, Worldwide, um, and it, it tends to be very much a shared 
ethos. So if you mention the fact that you're involved in a hack space somewhere, you can generally rock up at someone else's hack space and say hi, um, and they'll they'll happily sort of let you in. Although, frankly, if you get in contact with a hack space and say hi, I'm interested in what you're doing, they tend to let you want to rock up and say hi anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I think one of the surprising things is the kind of the amount of ones you have all over the world. I was talking to a friend, I explained the situation, she lives in France, and she said, oh yeah, there's nothing like that in my area. Pulled up the map, there's a website called hackspaces.org yeah. uh, that has a map of all the hackspaces in the world. Pretty much all of them are registered there, just as kind of a, a link on. And like I said, well, um, that's your house, is one 20 miles away and 50 miles away. Yeah, it's just one close to where you live. <laughs> Everywhere. Um, so, hack spaces in Leeds. Um, I perhaps we put like Leeds hack space. Um, we've just celebrated our one year anniversary um, in Margate Green, which are our current premises. So, we're right by the bus station, it's literally a five minute walk. Um, theoretically, in a couple of months, we'll be celebrating our four year anniversary because the group's actually been going for a while. And this is our second set of premises. Um, so, what, what can we actually bring to the party? Um, we've, we've got quite a nice workshop that we're, we're continuously expanding, um, so we've actually got some nice resources, we've got um, band saws and um, the lathe, we've got some colour drills and stuff, so uh, that's all the sort of stuff I can't get away with doing at home. Um, because we, we work together, um, it means basically we can pull money and resources and knowledge, so we've got um, laser cutter at the bottom, which um, does occasionally set itself on fire, but that's within its remit. Um, we have, um, <laughs> <laughs> it really is a um, we've, we've, um, we've got our sort of a two and a half D printer. It's a three D printer, but we're having issues with the Z axis at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, we tend to what we got. We've got tons of Arduino equipment. We've got tons of embedded electronics. We, we've got people who work as embedded ARM programmers, Linux admins, Windows developers. So the 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 amount of knowledge as well as resources is absolutely immense, um, and we do have tons and tons of caffeine on site, yeah. so that, that tends to help. We, um, uh, one of the photos that didn't come through was our talk shop, which is kind of huge. Um, and I guess we're, where we get that caffeine and sugar fixes from. So in fact, that's, that's a list of some of the stuff we've got. Do you, I, I was going yeah. to say, so um, I just noticed the picture of that because we brought one with us. Yeah, um, um, we have some of these things with us, uh, but these are just some examples of the other things that our colleagues and um, ourselves have been doing. So we've got some arcade cabinet. Uh, we got given like one of these old game consoles that huge used to play in pubs. Um, it was old, broken, so we ripped it out, stick uh, new computers and stuff inside it. Looks fantastic now. Um, yeah, uh, except we we don't like to make things easy, so we've, we've actually put little lights in all of the uh, all of the switches. Um, you usually uh, tricolor LED, so you've got to have four pins. We've managed to get them working with only two pins, um, and basically mingling data and power on one, and it's, it's absolutely ridiculous, but I remember spent a week doing that. Uh, we like building little robots. Um, that's something we can knock together really quickly and easily, so it's laser cut. Um, it's got maybe three or four quid worth of components and a little five quid microcontroller, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, very quickly on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, lots of things. things. Really. Um, Silly things for the sake of it. Um, laser cut acrylic signs because they're kind of oh that's working up. Laser cut acrylic signs because they're kind of fun. Um, that's Paul's uh, bottom left. That's Paul's little uh, temperature sensor, which, which is um, just made out of a couple of embedded controllers, and also uh, very kindly keeps track of how many days we've not lost power for because we we tend to blow the break semi regularly when we try to investigate things. Um, and then yeah, Tuesday nights we have our open night. Um, Everyone's welcome. If you're looking for somewhere to work on your own projects, if you're looking to find out what other people are doing, if you're looking for help with stuff, if you're just looking to come and chat and drink some coffee or whatever else, it would be absolutely lovely to see anyone and absolutely everyone welcome. A um, couple of things. Uh, also, this picture is an example of one of the other projects oh, we work on. Map. Open Street Map. It's kind of Google Maps except done by everyone on the ground. So you can, oh, no, you can just adjust the map and make it up to date for yourself. Great fun. Um, also, yeah, slightly bad timing. In the next user, you are all welcome to come down, have a visit, ask questions. It is also at AGM. Uh, <laughs> so if we're looking slightly distracted in the heating conversations, it's because we're having AGM. You are still welcome to come down. We will still answer questions. But um, distracted. Yeah, although frankly, a good time to get involved because uh, if you, if you want, yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably a good time to get involved. Um, so yeah, uh, and, any questions? Well, that tries to run off the stage. Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. I thought like the health like. I was going to ask, so how, how exactly did you guys uh, find each other? Like, was it, with, were you friends in Mac, or were you involved in Act spaces in other places, or how exactly did it come about? Um, the, the Leeds group started about four and a half years ago because the, the guys knew um, John T. from who set up London Hackspace. Um, so basically they kind of came back to Leeds and said we need to have something like this here. Um, so three, three of them got together and started the Hackspace organisation. Um, and it's, it's kind of been a little bit up and down since then. Um, our original premises were um, in the middle of Holbeck, so we, it was problematic attracting members and actually getting stuff done. Um, but the, I mean, you, you you basically found us online, I think, didn't you? Yeah, um, um, I was over in Czech Republic when I first heard about Hackspace, and we have quite a good one over there. But I never quite got the courage to go there because not only did I know very little about computer programming, electronics, anything like I want to get into, also the language barrier. They would speak in English if I turned up, but at the same time, I don't like to pressure people into speaking a foreign language just for my sake because I can't speak theirs. Um, so yeah, I got interested. Tell myself. Uh, um, computer language, Python, and a bit of electronics with the Arduino. And then when I got back to the UK, turned up with these guys and thought, hey, and they welcomed me. I mean, I, I personally, I turned up about two years ago for a lock picking evening that was being run by a security um, in the Well, okay, so, so for Ashley. Not illegal lock picking. Quickly, um, so, um, I mean, you, you have um, companies like that get paid to basically test security for other companies, and frankly, being a hacker, I don't. I don't like black boxes that I don't understand what's going on, so the idea of lock picking is kind of exciting. Um, I ended up going home and then replacing all the locks in my house because they were <laughs> terrifying. Um, but it, it, it's quite interesting the ethos behind it because, um, especially with some of the online lock picking communities, you, you're absolutely welcome to practice for the sake of practice and learn for the sake of learning, but no one's going to help you break into someone's house. They're very much dead against it. When you see photos turn up of a lock in situ, the first thing so the first 20 responses tend to be, you're almost certainly not supposed to be playing with that, you've not been given permission, otherwise you wouldn't be asking us how you get through it. Um, so there's, there's a surprising amount of uh, morality actually in, involved as well. So I, I thought lockpicking sounded interesting, I, I turned up and they, they never let me leave. Um, <laughs> that, that's, that's how I got involved. Yeah, cool, um, I think that's about us for time. Cool, cool. thank you very much. Oh, sure. one good question. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so there is a place in, in, in Boston uh, at MIT called uh, the Media Lab. Yeah. And then they do all sorts of crazy things. Yeah. And that's some, some sort of a thing that works uh, or, or, or operates in the university. And I think the idea would be there to transform all the craziness yeah. into, you know, in an academic way. And yeah. I, have you ever thought about uh, collaborating with Leeds University to create a place? Because I think, so, you know, university is kind of restrictive and you have to follow certain rules and then it can kill some sort of creative ideas. Um, but I guess it would be nice if there was a place where pe people could play around at the university. We've kind of run out of our time, but we'll come over and speak to you there about oh. that in one minute or so. Yeah, that's probably best. Um, we, we have, we, we've actually had a few new students working with us because they can't do what they want to do in the labs at the uni because of health and safety. Um, <laughs> we, we, do, we do keep, uh, we're, we're slightly more lastly fair about that. Um, we, we do, it is one of those that keeps coming back and forth because the absolute last thing that we want to do is to alienate people. So we're worried that if we were to set up as a university group, other people wouldn't be able to get involved. Whereas being an independent organisation, students are more than welcome and so is everyone else.